Now that you have the application package installed, we can start using it. Let's take a look at how to use the code to generate quick debug files. We are going to be working with the user make component. Let's say we wanted to debug some data in the component buffer during save time. So we are going to open up the component people code and go to the component save prechange event. First, we need to import our application package. That statement is simple and looks like this. The import statement needs to be above any function declares or any variable declares. Then we will jump down to the bottom of the event after all the vanilla code and put in our debug statements. First, we need to declare and create our data dumper object. When this object is instantiated, it takes an optional string, which will be the name of the file. If you leave the string empty, the data dumper class will configure one for you. It can really be anything. The key thing to remember is that if a file exists by that name, it will be overwritten. Now that we have our data dumper class declared and instantiated, we can start using the logging methods. Let's first just write out a string using the dump method. Then let's write out the PS opera def and record by traversing the component buffer and passing in a reference to the PS opera def and record object, which for this component is sitting at level zero. We pass in this record object to the dump record method. Then we tell a data dumper class to email the results to my email address. It's that simple. Now let's go over to the web browser and make a simple change in the component. We will pull up the A Cooper user ID and then change the alias on it and hit save. Since we told the data dumper class to email the log file, let's go over to our email client and check to see what we got. There is a standard email text and an attachment. Let's open the attachment and see what the dump methods created. First, we can see that starting debug string that we wrote out. Then we can see the dump record wrote out the record name and some other important record properties like is changed and is deleted. Then the dump record method listed out all the fields in the records and their values. You can also see an indicator of what fields changed. It even has the before value, which in this case was blank for the alias. So from one method call, where we passed in a record object, the dump record method dynamically expanded out all the fields on the record and wrote their values. Are you starting to see how this can help you quickly debug your code? Okay, let's look at some of the other functionality offered. Let's add a few more functions. Let's use the dump row set method to dump out the entire level zero scroll, which will include any records that exist at level zero. Then we will call the white space method to write out five blank rows to create some breathing room in the file. Then we will use the dump row set again, but this time we will pass in a reference to the PS role user view level one scroll. This will dump out the entire row set to the debug file. So let's go back over to our web browser and pull up the A Cooper ID back up. We will blank out the alias we just put in. Then we will go over to the roles tab and insert a new role of BOE admin, which you will note is now at row number two. So let's jump over to our email and check out the file that got emailed to us. So we'll actually open that file up. And we'll see it from the very beginning line, we see our starting debug statement, and then we see a dumping row set. And then we actually see that the record name is written out with a level number, and it shows you the row number of the first row that's being dumped. It gives you some properties of the row, like is new and is deleted. Then it actually dumps the record object out with the fields. And then the next record object on that row is written out, which is the work record, and the fields for that record that are in the buffer. And we have another record on the row, PS user attribute. It's written out with all the field values that are in the buffer. So we're going to just skip down to the bottom because there's a lot of records in that uh, row. 
And then you're going to see that we actually dump the row set PS role user view and it's at level one. And you can see we're dumping the first row and it's not a new row, it's an existing row. So you see there are dump record objects and there is another record object and a third and a fourth on that row. So then we actually get to the second row and you'll see this is the row that we actually inserted and you can see that the field values are marked as changed and you can see that this is a new row. So it continues down very similar to the row three and then row four. and so forth. So as you can tell, this data dumper class can be very useful for dumping out component buffers and standalone row set, row, and record objects. We have just demoed the code in the context of the component buffer, but it can also be used in application engine or even integration broker people code events. Let's briefly go over the methods that are currently available. Dump, which will dump out a type of any, dump string which will dump out a string dump record will dump out a record object it can be tied to the buffer or a standalone record object dump array of records will dump out an array of records dump row set will dump out a row set including all rows and record objects dump row will dump out a row object dump array will dump out an array dump array of string will dump out an array of string Dump level zero is a shortcut method that only works in the context of buffer people code, which will dump out the level zero scroll. Dump current row is a shortcut method that will dump out the current row in the context of the buffer people code. Dump query string will dump out the URL query string. Dump HTTP header will dump out the header values. Dump field will dump out a field object. White space will put in any number of white space in the file and email dump file will email the results to any email address you specify. If you don't specify an email address, the file will just be sitting on the application server logs directory. There are also a few properties on the data dumper class which are optional. There's email subject, so you can override the default email subject. Email body, you can override the default email body. Indent level, which you can change the indent level of the writes in the file so you can easily visualize the nested calls. And file contents will dump out the entire debug file to a string. If you have any other ideas that you'd like to see incorporated, please contact me by going to cedarhillsgroup.com and clicking on Contact Us. I think many people tools developers will find this class useful. <laughs>